Hello, PodFam, and hello, Rachel. How are you today? I am doing all right, Laura. This is going to be an interesting episode today. Yep. It's wedding season, so we thought for fun, let's do a quick and dirty on wedding traditions. Yes. Yes. Are they superstitions? (laughs) (laughs) Are they superstitions or are they just like kind of patriarchal? We'll get into it. Um, But how are you? I am good. Um, If our listeners listened to last week's episode, they will know that uh, we were talking about our favorite things from the 2000s. And ever since that episode was recorded, I've been watching The O.C., (laughs) I love that for you. It's been fun. It's been fun. Is See, I feel like that's like a fun summer show. Like One Tree Hill, you kind of have to commit. Yes. And then, you know, there's that whole morning period that comes after season four before they do the time jump. But the OC, it's like four seasons. It's just fun. It is you know? fun. Yeah. And I actually forgot like a lot of the actual storylines. But yeah. as I've been watching it, it's more like the cultural references Yeah, And I'm like having flashbacks of like, oh my God, I remember when we used to listen to that band and Mm -hmm. like wore those clothes and said Mm -hmm. these things and acted like that because that's what they did on the OC. Mm -hmm. So it's been like a lot of fun. And you know what? The show kind of holds up 18 years later. Yeah, it holds up. Nice. And I've also been kind of watching it alongside the Welcome to the OC Bitches podcast with Mm -hmm. Rachel Bilson and Melinda Clark. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's been kind of fun to like learn a little bit more about the characters behind the show and like the actual actors who play them because they also come on the podcast and give interviews on their experience. So that's been kind of cool. And it's a very different vibe from like the Drama Queens mm-hmm. podcast and really like those actors experience on the One Tree Hill set versus the OC because um, mm-hmm. they loved the creator Josh Schwartz of the OC, Mm -hmm. like just a really down to earth guy. They all still talk to him and hang out with him. And he was also like 27 years old, which was like the youngest showrunner at the time. So it was kind of cool. cool. Like just to see like they, like most of them, you know, can't say speak for everyone, but they all had a very good experience on the show where Mm -hmm. One Tree Hill, like the environment was set against them a little bit for like that creative like oh let's keep these two spicy together so we'll we'll try and like keep a wedge between them at all times so it's very fascinating to see like just the different dynamics that's interesting I love how all those like old 2000s shows are getting podcasts now where they just watch it back and I'm like that is a very niche market but it was genius oh my gosh every (laughs) single show now has a podcast to go with it like I know I was getting um an ad after I started listening to the OC one for Mm -hmm. the Gossip Girl podcast. I think it's called like XOXO and I don't remember the actress's name, but she plays Vanessa. Oh, okay. I think she's the host of it. So I'm like, oh my God, we're having like all these like get the juicy details of what was going on our favorite shows. I should check that out. You would probably love it because you were like a huge Gossip Girl fan. Oh, lived for Gossip Girl. I wasn't the biggest Vanessa fan, but like I could, I can move past it. I can move past it. Yeah. But um, I have a life update. Go for it. It's not really a li- life update, but I just need to share. I'm in a war with a squirrel. Oh. At my house because this lovely little critter has decided that um, my plants, my pots, for my plants where I'm growing some kale and stuff is the prime real estate for him to bury his uh, acorns. Oh no. For the winter, which I'm like, first of all, sweetheart, I'm going to be throwing this out. But I was, I was okay. Cause I'm like, you know what? I can live with it. You know, like live in harmony with the animals. Right. Right. I come out yesterday to go check on my plants and he's been eating my kale now. No. What a naughty little thing. And I was just like, Sir, this is not a restaurant. This is my kale. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. So I haven't quite come up with a solution for that yet. But I thought, um, you know, since I've shared many stories about how uh, when I had a little four-legged critter, how on occasion he was the bane of my existence, mm-hmm. um, that hasn't stopped. It's just another <laughs> four-legged little critter. He's embodied the squirrel. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure that Benji did not send this squirrel because 
it started like within a week after his passing. And I'm just like, you know what? You would do that from the other side is just send a menace <laughs> to eat my kale. Just to keep you on your so, toes, you know? Yeah. He was just like, you know, you need to continue to deal with these little little four-legged critters who just have way more personality than you think that they would need in their small little bodies. And I've seen him. I've seen this little squirrel. <laughs> and he stares. He's coming during the day now. Oh, he's bold. I know. I'm like looking out the door and I see him coming up the porch and I'm just like, oh, no. And then I realized I'm turning into my dad because I <laughs> I went out there and I yelled at that squirrel. And I was just like, oh, no. It's happening. Oh, no. <laughs> it's happening. You know, it happens more and more every year. But now I'm like, I don't. there's no turning back. No, we just kind of embrace it. Like, you know, they say, oh, you always turn into your parents. It's kind of true in some, some ways with their quirks. Mm -hmm. I definitely know I have a few where my boyfriend would be like, your dad does the exact same thing. <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah. yeah, it's just our thing. It's just a family thing yep. that we do. <laughs> yep. I feel that. I feel that um, my boyfriend says the same thing mm -hmm. to me. Usually it's about keeping the kitchen clean. That's important though. It is. You know what? Yeah. You and I, we're right. Exactly. We are right. There is no other answer. It should – I digress. That's that's another. <laughs> that's a episode. different episode. <laughs> We're talking about happy couple things today. Um, but yes. first of all, what are you drinking? I am having a peppermint tea. This is this like evening. the third week in a row you've had peppermint tea, girl. You got to change that up. I know I it's refreshing, know. but like you have other teas. It's just it's so hot, and my boyfriend nicely made it for me this evening, and he just slipped the peppermint tea bag in, so I'm like, okay, I can't I, I can't fight back on that. No, can't argue with that. No. Well, I'm having a leftover tea bag because I'll just, mm. you know, use it till it has no more flavor. Fair. And um, the original tea was hot, uh, and it was my femininity tea, but um, for simplicity and because it's also pretty humid, I just threw it in a glass of water. So. Delicious. Yeah. Got some flavored water Amazing. going on. Feel really fancy. Awesome. It's kind of, you know, like a – it's it's like – we'll say it's nice tea. It wasn't brewed it's, that way, but it, we'll say it. Yeah. Nice. It's a lukewarm, not even lukewarm, <laughs> tap water femininity tea. <laughs> that, you know, that sounds delicious. It's great. It's really great. Yeah. Yeah. So shall we crack into it? Yes. With wedding superstitions. Yes. So Rachel, have you been to any weddings this year? I have. I've been to two within a week of each other. Awesome. One was one Saturday and then the next one was the Saturday right after. And I was just like, well, you know, that was a lot, but I'm also glad because then I got it out of the way like all at once. Exactly. So what, you know? what was the vibe of these weddings? So the first wedding that we went to, we just got um, invited to the after party, which I find really cool. Like I like when people do that where they're like, okay, I'm going to invite this group of people to the ceremony and then the dinner and then like invite more people to come in for like the reception party, right? Yeah. And it was very chill. Like it was a lot of fun. It was just um, an outdoor wedding on someone's property. Nice. So yeah, it was a good, good time. Everybody was just, you know, having lots of drinks and like the dance part, the dance floor was just like on the grass. So from what I saw, because, you know, I was kind of like creeping out my window a little bit um, so that I don't sound creepy. We do live on the property that this wedding was held because I'm just like, that sounds really creepy. I was just going to say like, to the um, party, but yeah, you just, you know, creep on other people's weddings just casually. It's, just yeah. like, it's a hobby. <laughs> yeah. So we do, we do live on the property. So I didn't see like, I didn't creep on the ceremony part. We made sure that we were out of the house for that, but I did kind of look out the window a bit uh, for the dinner. And, you know, like I saw, like they did do the traditional stuff like the first dance and all of that so I can't speak too much on like the tradition vibe yeah of that one um and then I had a wedding the weekend after which is very much more like what I imagine like the typical wedding like traditional wedding to be mm -hmm. and it was um partially like vibe wise when it came to tradition I would say it was about 50 50 so there were a lot of traditions that they still did, but other ones that they kind of like threw out right. the window. So yeah, probably a bit more traditional than the one I was at before, but not like the full, not running the full gamut, you know? Yeah. And this was like the really formal black tie wedding as well. Yes. That's another thing is the wedding before was pretty like, you could kind of wear like a cocktail dress and it was all right, where this one was definitely a lot more 
like the invite said black tie optional. Right. And I'm like, that usually means black tie. Yeah, wear a black so, tie. <laughs> Throws yeah. off the the look if you don't. It does. So what about you? What was, Have you been to a few? I've been to one so far and I have another one coming up in a little over a month. Um, nice. So the first one that I went to, it was very much your like more traditional wedding. It did like a few of the typical wedding things, um, but definitely that, you know, cocktail mm-hmm. uh, dress code and on the golf course and typical, you know, you like did the ceremony, dinner and, and dancing. Um, mm-hmm. And then the one coming up is totally non-traditional uh, and always <laughs> literally I love it uh bring your own chair having a bonfire it's on a beach wear lots of color um love it I'm pretty excited for that one not gonna lie because I I love when weddings break out of the mold I don't know for my own like personal wedding how out of the mold I would go but like mm-hmm. if things are like themed or like super casual I think it's really awesome and yeah. this will be like kind of my first wedding that I go to that is more on that like casual side where mm-hmm. like really the only traditional thing they're doing is like the quick ceremony. Hmm. So I'm excited. I will report back after I attend this wedding because I'm super right. excited and so is my partner, which is like so definitely saying something because he's just like, oh my God, I can wear like a crazy shirt. I'm like, Absolutely. He's like, I'm going to go pull out one of my Hawaiian tropical shirts. Oh, it's, it's something along those lines. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, well, that one's going to be so fun. I'm so excited to hear about it because like, I don't know. It's just, it's, it seems so, like unique and fun. It does. And it's just to like, like, just like sounds like a big party, which I mean, like with the couple getting married sounds exactly right. Yeah. Like dinner is like pizza, barbecue. And I think the late night is McDonald's. So like, how can you go Excellent. wrong? How can you go wrong? You can't. Perfect. It's gonna all be delicious. It's what we've always all wanted <laughs> to have on a wedding exactly. day. Exactly. I mean, I would probably have pizza on my wedding. Exactly. It's like we all want that anyway. Yeah, that was kind of my plan. Pizza. Yeah. But anyway, and you have some great pizza. Yes. Yes. My dad is wedding. the king of pizza, so like he would have to kind of make some ahead, and then yes. we'll have someone else bake them. But of course, he would have to supervise this. <laughs> so oh he would he, he would be like the ceremony has to be at 11 a.m why because i need to be there it's like i need to watch make all these pizzas for everyone and like he's like no one else will do it right so i better do it myself um, i need the time yeah that would be my dad and like i want my mother to make her cheesecake i'm like i don't know those things they make me happy and <laughs> that's what i would Wonderful. want but anyway today we kind of were talking about like different wedding traditions but almost superstitions like Mm -hmm. where was that line drawn when did it become a tradition and do people like still do it today is it falling out of favor Mm -hmm. we kind of decide to pull two one is more a traditional thing and the other one is more of a superstition so we just kind of want to talk about like the history of where it's from and uh what it all kind of means so, mm-hmm. Rachel, what is your superstition slash tradition? Mine is not seeing the bride before the wedding, which I think over time has kind of turned more into like brides uh, not wanting their partner to see them in the dress. Yes. Before the wedding, like that's kind of how it's evolved. And with how it is culturally now, and well, not necessarily now, but for a long time, it was viewed as bad luck to see the bride in her dress before the wedding. Right. Did it give um, any like reason like why that was bad luck or is it more like I just think, the origin which you're going to talk about? I think it just over time became from what I was reading, it just became like a superstition about it because it was in place for so long. Right. Okay. So really it was – the reason's kind of funny. I mean like – more like outrageously funny. I laughed. But I'm not going to lie. When I heard the reason again. why you don't see the bride before the wedding, I laughed and it's it, it shouldn't be funny. I'm sorry. It's not. But it was kind of funny. But it is funny. So pre-18th century, when arranged marriages were more of a thing, um, they weren't allowed to see each other in case the groom deemed the bride unattractive and wanted to back out. <laughs> Which is awful. Like that is, I know, that is I know, terrible. I know. 
you know how it's not so much of a thing anymore, but you know for a long time how with the veils, there was also the veil that would come over your face? Yes. That was because she would have to walk down the aisle with the veil over her face until she got to the end before they put it up oh my so God. that well, he wouldn't back out because well, it would be too late. And <laughs> also, like, when I think about, like, a lot of the traditional weddings, you know, the bride, like, keeps her veil on while they're doing, like, their vows and the ring exchange. And usually it was, like, you may now kiss the bride, which kind of came into fashion. That's when the veil would come up. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> It, it kind of makes like so much sense. Uh, it was it was so the it was so the groom wouldn't be like, ooh. Oh my god, can you imagine? Like this is like last minute backing out. Like you're doing your vows and you're like, oh, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> oh my uh, god, it's, that's awful. It's not funny. It's not. It's funny, not. It's it not. Is. I'm sorry. It's not funny. But like, <laughs> it's the fact that like the ooh. groom can like you know jilt the bride <laughs> right at I the know. altar. That's it's awful. Like. And I'm sure know, it happened. I'm so sure this bad. is why it was deemed bad luck. Um, it's so bad. So it's it's terrible. I feel awful for any of the women that it happened to. Unless they really didn't want to marry that guy, then, you know, then, it works yeah. out in their favor. Um, yeah, like, why is nobody covering up his face I know. until she gets there? Because, like, what if he is, like, not that hot? Oh, the fucking patriarchy, man. They're, they're like, sorry, Honestly. you beautiful young woman. You are saddled with this this old man. Better luck next time. Go watch Bridgerton. Yeah. There's examples. Yes, there's many there's examples, examples of this. But yeah, um, it kind of shows. So or more on the serious note, it kind of shows like how little choice women had. And really, oh, yeah. the whole point of marriage was political and like um, – Economical. Economical, right? It, it, mm-hmm. it linked families. It linked properties. It linked countries. Like really, that's what women were. They were bartering chips. For, okay. for like men, right? And I know we're not going down that. that. We're not going too far down this road tonight. That's a whole other episode. We're trying to keep it light, and light. Sweet. But uh, yeah, I just find this such a crazy tradition that I know they had to cover up the bride just in case the man didn't like her. Like, come on. I mean, are we surprised? No, no, no. I'm not this- surprised. I'm not saying come on. Because <laughs> like, surprised. At I'm all. like, how dare you? It's I'm like-, like, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on get over yourself but also like it's very in alignment with um yeah. the patriarchal society that we have been raised in it does track um, it does track with it, uh, it with tracks. everything that's happened to women yeah yeah so um obviously now i mean i hope so this practice is not in place in case the man wants to um jilt her at the altar i would hope um but now it's more transitioned into like the not wanting the groom to see the bride all done up in like her dress and stuff before the wedding. But it is kind of starting to get phased out. I I hear Um, it less as a bad luck thing, you know. And more just a preference. Yeah, more just a preference because like I know um, something I love and I think it's from the movie uh, 27 Dresses with Katherine Heigl. And she was just like when everyone's looking at the bride, I always look back at the groom because that's when he's Mm -hmm. getting to see her for the first time. And I kind of love that. Like, I love it. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I think I would not want my fiance slash soon to be spouse to see me in my dress. I think I would want that like big reveal. Right. Well, let, let's like we're getting ahead of ourselves here because we have to um, discuss what it's transitioning into. Oh, sorry. What's becoming more common <laughs> is the first look. Yes. Thing that people are doing before the ceremony so obvious you know usually it's like a big um like photo op mm-hmm. right before where you know everybody's all, all freshly done up and stuff and it's like the capturing the moment where the groom sees the bride for the first time and it's like a private moment between them I really like the pictures but I'm on the same page as you that you know what I want it to be a surprise yeah and I want that man to cry in front of, in front of everyone <laughs> As I walk down the aisle, right. ain't no first look happening for me. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same. I think maybe this first look tradition is like a little too new for I for think me. So. so like I already have it in my head of what I want. So yeah, I'm with you. But I do like the pictures that people do. Like they'll be standing like back to back with each other, back to back like between a wall or a door. 
and then they'll do like a little peek around the corner or it's like sometimes they won't even get to look at each other. So they do still keep that surprise for the altar, mm -hmm. but like you'll capture those pictures of them dressed up, but they can't see each other. So that, those ones are so cute. That's pretty cute. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cute. But I'm with you on the big reveal. It's with everyone else. Um, mm -hmm. And then something that kind of goes hand in hand with this tradition is the, like, I guess you don't see the bride at all before the wedding, like kind of going in between the origin tradition and today oh, yeah. where, you know, often like they'll see each other for the last time at the rehearsal dinner the mm -hmm. night before the wedding and then they spend the night apart and then they're apart all day and then they finally see each other at the wedding. What are your thoughts on that one? Uh, to be honest, I would do that because I want a fresh sleep in my own bed. That's true. Yeah. 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 No, yeah like, I feel like what? that's more out of convenience now. Like yeah, obviously yeah, before no. most people didn't live together, you know, they were saving themselves for marriage. Um, mm -hmm. Just totally fine if that's what you want to do. It's just not as common as it used to be. Mm -hmm. And definitely like not living together either. So, yeah, now I see that more as a, like, okay, I'm going off with the girls. I'm going off with the guys. We're getting ready. And then, like, mm -hmm. this little separation and we're going to be so excited to see, see each other. Exactly. And you know what? I'm about to see this man every day for, like, the rest of my life. Yeah. It's all right. I'll see you at the wedding. Exactly. I think that's my perspective. But what about your superstition slash tradition? Uh, so mine is a little bit more – for tradition, but on the superstition side, it does symbolize good luck. And okay. that is the old rhyme of something old, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. Mm -hmm. So, Rachel, you have probably heard this rhyme before, right? Yes. I feel like a little bit. Almost everyone has, bit. right? Like, mm -hmm. it's uh, pretty common, especially in any like traditional English families, because it actually mm -hmm. did originate from uh, an old English rhyme that dates back to the 19th century. However, mm -hmm. the original rhyme was actually something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, and a sixpence in your shoe. Oh, yes. So, have you heard you've heard that one before too? I, I actually recently just read about it this evening. Oh, well, there you go. You are yes. all caught up then. Um I am. so yeah, this was traditionally good luck, but it wasn't a requirement for a happy marriage. And really it was just like a nice way to incorporate cherished items, people, and memories. So I've kind of always loved this tradition because I feel like people can get very like obvious with it or it yeah. can be very subtle and um I kind of love when I'm at a wedding and I'll just see items either like on the bride or uh incorporated with the whole wedding venue mm -hmm. of those things that are like oh I can tell like that was something old or like that was obviously the something blue like you know she's she's got like a blue flower in her bouquet you know I feel like those are just nice touches and it's also not a tradition that's linked back to anything creepy when i was reading about the history of it it was a very like coming together of women to support the bride and the couple love that so there is a reason for each one of these words for old it was an item that tied you to the past okay uh, for new it was to symbolize hope and optimism for the future uh, borrowed was from a happily married friend or relative for luck of union and fertility. Aww. And then for blue, it was to ward off evil, and it also stood for love, purity, and fidelity. And then, this of course, just warming my heart. I know, right? And then, this of course, so the sixpence pure. was to bring prosperity to the couple. So Aww. I just felt like with all of those things, like these are the things we're thinking about when we're at weddings, you know. Um, mm -hmm. We're remembering things from the past. We're remembering people who might be gone. Um, you know, we're bringing together hope and optimism for the couple. And uh, yeah, so I thought like all these things were so nice and just small mementos. Now, the reason why we don't hear it as often with the sixpence in there is because sixpences are no longer produced. Mm -hmm. However, there are some brides that will like hunt them down just to have that. them. Um so in a lot of different traditions, the sixpence will sometimes be like replaced with 
a penny or like a different kind of coin um, Mm -hmm. just to still have that symbolism of prosperity if they're kind of following this old rhyme of tradition. I love this so much. I know, right? Women helping women. Yes, yes. I just kind of loved them all coming together. I can imagine them all getting ready together and they're like bringing their mementos of like, okay, here's something borrowed, here's something blue, old and new. So I kind of want to go through a couple ideas if someone okay. wants to follow this tradition and really can get so creative with it. So these are just kind of like my favorite things that I have seen. Old, for sure, jewelry. Like yes. if your family has like any heirloom jewelry uh, or like any vintage jewelry, I think this is like the perfect thing to wear. I'm pretty sure my mom had um, my great-grandmother's pearls on for her yeah. wedding. I'll have to look at the wedding photo closer because she's either wearing like – her locket or her pearls. I'm pretty sure it's her pearls. And like for my own wedding, I would want to wear those pearls. And then um, another thing I love was actual fabric from like her mother's wedding dress or like her grandmother's wedding dress. And it could just be like sewn in somewhere on the dress or like into the bouquet I've seen before where like her mother's dress is like the wrap. Um, And then also – some brides will actually like wear their mother or grandmother's dresses either like exactly how they were or they'll have them like altered into a more modern look. I love that Mm -hmm. tradition. I think it's so amazing to like have a story behind a dress and like, especially if like um, grandmothers are are no longer with them on their wedding day, it does have like a piece of them. So I just love how connected everything is. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. Um, and then something a little bit more non-traditional is like a vintage getaway car, right? Ooh, something you wouldn't think cute. about. Yeah. Like as the, the couple is leaving the wedding, they have like a classic car, which is something old. Um, so yeah, I think there's so many ways to be creative and you can also like pay tribute to lost loved ones, like I said earlier, in like a locket or like have a picture of them in your bouquet. There's so many things you can do. I absolutely love that. Um, something new. Rachel, actually, before I move on to something new, what would your old thing be? Um, so mine would probably be jewelry as well. We're very similar. <laughs> um, but I was actually talking to my mother about it recently because I was saying like I've always wanted to have like my own string of pearls mm-hmm. or something because I just – I love strings of pearls. And then she was telling me that I think I – I don't know if it's my grandmother or my nanny who is my great-grandmother – but she has a string of pearls from one of them that she said I could wear at my wedding. Oh, lovely. So very similar to me. You know, you get to kind of like wear the pearls for for the day Mm -hmm. and and just be connected to your your foremothers. Exactly. Or maybe like a bracelet or something, depending on if that string of pearls does actually exist. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so something new. This one is relatively easy because technically you could say like, oh, the rings are new, my shoes are new, the gown is new. Some people will also do like spouse presents. Like okay. They'll get each other a gift before the ceremony and kind of when, when they're getting ready, that's when they open it. Um, I love seeing this on people's like wedding vlogs where they write mm-hmm. notes to each other with the gift. Oh. I'm not going to – that's one of my pastimes. Um <laughs> <laughs> sometimes watching wedding vlogs um but that like I think that's just just something so special between the couple then it's like something new for both of you and you're starting this journey together mm. I don't really know what I would want for something new I feel like that's that's open-ended um, I feel like if I because like I have a vision of how I want my hair to be mm-hmm. That like if it was like, you know, kind you know, like the fancy like hair comb pieces. Yes. That would probably be mine. That would be cute. Yeah. Something something like that. Because I've always loved those, but yeah. All right. Something borrowed. Now, this could again almost be anything. Like you could borrow a necklace, you could borrow jewelry, um, borrow shoes. Like really, it doesn't matter. Um, but I kind of loved the background of the significance of the person you're borrowing from. And Mm -hmm. this was thinking about borrowing something from an important woman or person in your life so that they can like, you can have like their presence and energy with you Mm -hmm. in that day. 
Um, and then an out of a box idea that I found was borrowing in quotation marks, your parents mm-hmm. or your grandparents wedding song. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Do you know your parents wedding song? No, no, I don't. Anytime I ask my mom questions about her wedding, she was like, it was the blur. I don't remember. <laughs> and I'm just like, honestly, sounds about right. Was she like, drinking the wine <laughs> at her wedding? Probably. But like, you know, my mom, she does, she like does not have a great memory. <laughs> Too far in the past, she so, says. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll ask my grandma and she can tell me. Oh, that'd be nice. Um, mm-hmm. So my parents' wedding song was Angel Eyes by Jeff Healy, which is actually one of my favorite songs. So Love it. don't know if I would borrow it for for my, my wedding. I always kind of envisioned Harvest Moon by Neil Young being my mm. song. But mm. uh, that one would be like maybe the father-daughter dance. I don't know. Maybe that would be like a nice no. way to bring it forward. Nice. Um, anyway, moving on to blue. This one can be right. so fun. And I find this is really the one where it's either obvious or very subtle. Um, mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's blue flowers peppered in. Um, maybe the bride's shoes are blue. She might have like a blue piece of jewelry. I could have blue in the decorations or like blue bridesmaids dresses. So that's another one mm-hmm. where like you could get totally creative with. Um, Mm -hmm. For me personally, I think my wedding shoes would be like baby blue Toms. Um, Love it. Because if if you know me and my style, (laughs) Toms are just like the shoes I wear when it's not snowing. (laughs) It's true. I can confirm. I have a permanent Toms tan (laughs) on my feet. You guys a new round of like three every summer. I do. I have like rotating toms and like the last year's pair will then turn into the barn toms and then I get like a new pair of like going to work toms and then there's the everyday toms and then there's the barn toms so like I, love it. I feel like me wearing toms at my wedding because um you know I always imagine like oh I'm gonna wear high heels it's a long fucking day and I feel like I would want to be very comfortable so I'm getting myself some toms and they're gonna be blue what about you though um to be honest, I feel like I would probably tie it into this little hairpiece thing. Mm, I like because it. Because I don't know. Do you remember the movie with um, Anne Hathaway, Bride Wars? Yes. Yes. So I think I think it was this movie. And this is like kind of where I got the idea where I think she gets given um, like a little hairpin with a blue flower. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where I got the idea from. So ever since, I'm just like, it would be in my hair. Perfect. Yeah. I feel like with yeah. a lot of these things, like obviously not the – new thing but like Mm -hmm. the old the borrowed and the blue you could kind of like make that one thing yeah or like the new and the blue borrowed and old like you don't have to have four separate things Mm -hmm. you know it could just be like a couple of little things and yeah I think it's just a great way to think about your loved ones and the people around you I don't know I just I love when weddings can like bring people together because that's really what they're meant to do also love that it's just not some patriarchal bullshit this time Uh, finally finally (laughs) we have a tradition that's not linked to patriarchal bullshit i'm sure a man well no actually i don't know if a man ever thought of this i don't know this any research that i found on it was very like woman women or yeah like like the women were the ones bringing the bride these items Mm -hmm. um so I love that. Finally, something for the women. <laughs> yeah, I love it. At least it's not being like, and yeah, we have this rhyme in place just in case the groom wants to back out. Yes. All right. Oh my God. So Rachel, I have some rapid fire yes. questions for you. Um, I'm ready. Either going to be yes, no, or cringe. Oh, yes. Okay. And we'll throw in cute there. If there's something that's cute, say cute. Okay. Okay. First one bride and groom having a first dance i find it cute i'm a yes on that one yes i'm a yes too on that one yeah i know like a lot of people now aren't having Mm -hmm. a first dance or it's like very cut down and short Mm -hmm. um i like weddings where maybe the first like minute is the bride Mm -hmm. and groom If if like okay let me let me back up here if the bride and groom are not like dancers like they're just kind of doing yeah. the the classic we're gonna sway and turn together kind of thing mm-hmm. I think if they do like 
the first minute of the song together and then the MC like invites everyone else up to dance. Yeah. Um, I like that. I personally would not do like a dance number. I was just about to bring that up because I like the first dance thing mm-hmm. unless they're like fully choreographed. Oh, if they are I professional dancers, so cringy. I bet I want to see a choreographed dance. If they are professional, and professional dancers. dancers. Yes. Like that, but I would come to your wedding expecting that. But um, like a lot of weddings now will have like the introduction of like the wedding party Ugh. and everyone's doing like a dance and that kind of stuff. I'm like, I'm like, take it or leave. I don't know. I don't, I personally would not have it at my wedding, but I'm like, I don't, that. you're cringe about it. Okay. I don't why like you, it. Why are you cringe? I don't like, I just, I, well, again, like you said, Unless they're professional dancers. I feel like everyone has to be committed. If everyone is committed and it's good, yes, do it. But if you have like people who are like, oh, I don't like, I don't want to do that. Like, don't do it then, you know? Yeah. Like you can kind of tell when they don't really want to be doing it. Yes. Yes, you can. Yeah. But I love it yeah. when like some people will make it funny. And if you're all going to like commit to that, awesome. Mm-hmm. Run with it. But I feel like have this discussion with your wedding party in advance and make them make sure they have a plan or else sometimes it can just like fall flat. Yeah. So that's my feels on that. All right. Next question. Pans behind the car. Pans? Cans. Like tin cans. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I couldn't remember. And the just married sign. (laughs) Like take it or leave it for me. But I'm also like, I hope that none of those cans fall off. And litter. And now we're just like it littering. So I would say no. I personally wouldn't do that. Yeah, I personally wouldn't either. And I feel like this is a tradition that you don't – I don't know if I've ever seen – not in my lifetime. I've never actually seen it in person. I've never seen it either. But I feel like it was a very like 80s thing. That sounds about right. Yeah, like like before the 2000s, I feel like this happened a lot. I don't know. Maybe it was like a more glamorized by Hollywood weddings? Most likely. Yeah, and really like the tradition – I took a quick look at it – was they wanted to just like – create like a bunch of noise and celebration about the bride and groom so like i thought that was kind of cute but um yeah personally i don't think i'd want my getaway car with like the cans <laughs> maybe a just married no. sign but i don't know i'm like not really that flashy so i would probably not want like everyone everyone just driving down the street <laughs> like i would be like a secret exactly <laughs> i feel like that's just me personally yeah okay next one the groom getting the garter off the bride's leg. Oh my god. I actually I find it a little cringy. Okay. But that's just because like I don't think I could make it through doing that in front of my grandparents and my father. <laughs> so um <laughs> I am so cringe on this. And I, I have a reason. So I have a reason. The, okay. the first time I ever saw this was at my oldest brother's wedding. Mm-hmm. And I was like Mm -hmm. 15 or 16 so oh yeah yeah oh yeah that'll do it she was cringe for me that's a cringe for me (laughs) yeah yeah and I don't know I just uh, I'm with you I feel like that probably set the tone for me and then if I were to see it at anyone else's wedding I'm like uh, I just I find it weird like the the groom is under the bride's dress Going up her leg and using his teeth to get the garter off. And then he's throwing it to the groomsmen. Oh, I just find it all so cringe. I think it goes back to the patriarchy thing. It does. And like the whole like, ooh, I'm getting her. I don't know. It just does not – doesn't work for me. It's a no. I find it a little degrading. Yeah. It's a no. It's a no for me. Yes. All right. Let's leave that one. Next one. Throwing the bouquet. That's a yes for me. That's a yes for me I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't really – I wouldn't say like I am like in on the superstition thing. No. About it being like the next person – the person that catches it is going to get married next unless like that actually does happen, which like cool. But like it's just fun. It's like a fun little activity. Yeah, I like it too. I think this is super cute. Now, have you ever caught the bouquet? I've actually never been old enough Oh, to be at a wedding where they actually did it to catch it because the – uh, weddings that I was at recently, they didn't do it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, I'm kind of surprised yeah. they didn't do it. Um, so I don't know if I missed it, but sometimes, yeah, because yeah, like that. at the most recent wedding I was at, it was like later at night, and 
I feel like some people were like outside, some people were inside. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we were just in the right place at the right time. Can confirm on the superstition for you're the next get married because I have caught the bouquet at almost every wedding I've been to and not intentionally like – They'll be like the girls in front of me, like just clamoring each other for it. And I don't know. I'm just one of those, like, I just reach my arm up and I can just grab it. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) It helps that you're taller. (laughs) It just comes to me every time. And then even at um, a wedding I was at last year, the bride literally walked up to me and handed it to me in front of my boyfriend. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. We have pictures of that. It's great. Um, So, yeah, not married yet. Um, so not not truly believing in that superstition, but like I like this. I think it's cute. I think it's a lot of fun for like all the girls and like you just watch all mm-hmm. the the scared looks on all the men's faces. Um, <laughs> that's one little tradition I like. I think it's just funny. With some of those weddings that you've been to where you caught the bouquet, have the people that got married, have they been to other weddings since? I don't know. <laughs> we we should look into that because if they know. haven't, then maybe you are still the oh, next shit. to get married. <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think about that one now, did you? Uh, no, no, I'm speechless over here. Um, I guess we'll see. Um, I guess so. I guess so. I'm going to have to like go around and take a poll at yeah. my eventual wedding, I guess, and be like, hi, is this the most recent wedding you've been to since your own? <laughs> <laughs> Please do. I would love it. Okay. You remind me I'll, to do I'll that I'll go one. around. I'll take care of it for okay. you and I'll go around with little cards and then I'll report back. Perfect. I would like to know the... Um, the percentage on on that yes and no, um, yep. that will definitely lead to my believing in the superstition. Okay. Yes. Although I did think – I think I caught it when I was 16 at my brother's wedding. So I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. We're going to see. But at the previous three you weddings – You were a minor. I, that didn't count. No. I, yeah, that was not legal. <laughs> so we'll, we'll let that one go. Other than that, all the other weddings, I have caught the bouquet. All right. Next one, the father-daughter dance. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I'm a yes, yes to my father. Because I just want to see my dad dance. I bet your dad dances. You know? I I think he can dance. I bet there are some secret moves hidden in there. He has his moments. He has his moments. I can't show you what the dance moves look like right now, but maybe another time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, for me, I would absolutely have to have a father-daughter dance. My dad can dance. It's actually pretty impressive love that for him yeah yeah he is pretty smooth with the dance moves and um i know he would cry Mm, yeah he would he would like my whole family we're just like teary people we're not like outward (laughs) criers but like we get teary-eyed um Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah that'll be a moment where we'll i'll be like dad keep it together keep it together we will like we won't be able to look at each other we'll be like dancing with opposite directions (laughs) Honestly, I'll probably do that too. Yeah. I I won't even be able to make it down the aisle. Oh, with my dad, I'll just be like, <laughs> "All right, no. well, that one's coming up soon." Um, okay. Next one is bridesmaids in matching dresses. Um, no, I wouldn't do that, but I would maybe ask them to wear the same color. Yeah, I feel like that's the new norm now. Like I, mm-hmm. I don't think I've been to a wedding in recent years where all the bridesmaids have been wearing the exact same dress, but they have been in the same color. And I love this, especially at the wedding I was at just most recently. They were all in the same color, but the dresses Mm -hmm. that they were wearing were very flattering for their body types. Yeah. And I really liked that. Like I thought they all just looked like so pretty and also very like individual. Like it kind of – you could kind of tell – I don't know how much of a say they had on like the style of the dress, but it kind of felt like their personality was able to come through a little bit more than just like, mm-hmm. okay, we are all identical. Honestly, I'm probably just going to have you as a bridesmaid at my wedding. So I can wear whatever so I you want. you can just wear whatever the hell you want. Cool. I don't care. Cool. Just just pick something. Maybe like, you know, send me a picture before, but like. <laughs> no surprises. <laughs> Like, yeah, maybe don't surprise me because I don't know, but it's all good. You can wear what you want. Yeah, I'm a yes for this, but I probably wouldn't do it for my own wedding. And that leads into the next question because I'm a no, most likely, on having a wedding party in general. Where do you fall? 
I mean, okay, you just um, explained it. Wow, I'm dumb. I'm I'm a no. I I'm a no except for probably having you. Yeah. Up there. Yeah. Because it's just I don't. I'm not really like I would like to have you there, but then like I feel like when you start to have more people, it's like then it gets into weird politics amongst friends and such where like I'm like if I just if you were my only bridesmaid everyone's gonna be like all right I get it yeah yeah I kind of like now for me personally um I like the idea of like we'd have like our witnesses and they don't even have to like stand up with us like they could just get up when they get to that signing the marriage certificate part Mm -hmm. um I'm cool with that yeah I'm with you like I would feel like if if I was gonna have a wedding party I would have to have like all of my closest friends Mm -hmm. and then I'd have like no one sitting in the audience um (laughs) see I don't have large friend groups so like I'd be like okay friends come to my wedding but you're all going to stand um yeah so I feel like I would rather have my friends like sitting you know in the front row and being Mm -hmm. there for me that way versus like okay we need to match you with uh you know my my fiance's friend over there hope you get along together because i i feel like that can be sometimes cringe moments for people Mm -hmm. and uh awkward at times yeah so like i'm I'm not saying no for other people's wedding because like you know i don't care do what you want but like i am seeing this trend now of no wedding party and mm-hmm. I'm I'm on that trend. I personally like it. I want like everyone to sit, be comfortable, wear what they want to mm-hmm. wear, and like I'll get like a witness to stand up, you know. And yeah. um, I feel like it just takes a lot of stress away. Like I, not that I think that like my friend group would have political issues because they all get along quite well, but. Um, yeah, I feel like it would just make it simpler. Although uh, the wedding I am going to, she is also not having a wedding party, but she is inviting her girlfriends to get ready with her. Mm-hmm. And that I kind of love. Yeah, you like know? I think I would do pretty much every – like I would want like some people to get ready with me. Yeah. If you were my sole bridesmaid, I would be like, you can just like walk down the aisle with me <laughs> and be like the witness. But then like you can sit down. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not going to be like you have to stand up the whole time and then you're just like I'm tired. Yeah, especially on those so. weddings where it's like 25, 30 degrees. Exactly. Kind to your guests. See, <laughs> see, honestly, my thing is I'm just like would just like you to sit next to me. Yeah. Yeah. Moral support. <laughs> moral support. I'll like, be like, you know, sit next to your tissue. Have a tissue. <laughs> <laughs> to your father here's a tissue <laughs> and to your mother here's two <laughs> yeah yeah and then you just like sit with me at dinner that's like but yeah I'm not like picky on like you would have to stand yeah oh and I'm gonna extend on that one because you just brought it up so a lot of people now I'm seeing um they might have a wedding party but they don't have like the wedding party dinner table it's now mm-hmm. more just like the bride and groom at the head table and they let um their bridal party like sit somewhere else and this I do like because it did happen at the most recent wedding where um like a lot of the people in the party you know they didn't have their spouse or like their partner also in the wedding party yeah and so I thought that was very like gracious of the bride and groom to think about that and being like well we don't want like all these people who are like the plus ones because we don't know Mm -hmm. if they're gonna know someone And they have to go sit by themselves while, like, their partner sits at the head table. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was very courteous because I know I've been to weddings in the past where it's been like that. And um, it can sometimes be a bit hard to place, like, the the single person, like, the other half um, Mm -hmm. at, like, a random table. So for the enjoyment of the people who are coming to your wedding, I thought that was very thoughtful. Yeah, I like that too. Yes. All right. Next one. This goes along the same lines. Having a wedding cake. Uh, honestly, I could take it or leave it because I feel like they're never really that good. I would. I like a collection of desserts. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna be honest. I don't recall going to really any wedding and actually eating the wedding cake. No. I've seen it cut. I've seen the wedding cake cut, but like, I don't ever recall getting a piece of it. <laughs> Like, I don't even think at the most recent wedding I was at that they even cut the cake. Yeah. I. It was um, just like in the corner somewhere. Yeah. Like I, I know there was a cake because I was sitting next to it 
And I think they did cut it, but I don't think anyone, maybe they didn't cut it. No, I'm pretty sure they cut it. But like, mm-hmm. I don't know who ate the cake. And it wasn't a large one. Like it was just kind of um, like a, a standard cake. Um, it was very mm-hmm. pretty, very like them and outdoorsy. But for the dinner, um, you know, we had all our courses and then we had dessert like served to us. And it obviously mm-hmm. was not the wedding cake. Um, yeah. So that's happened at like most weddings I've been to or there's been like a dessert table. Mm-hmm. So I just I just don't I don't know when this wedding cake gets eaten. <laughs> so to be honest, I think it just sits there, which is why I'm like, I wouldn't spend my money on it. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah. Like I know a lot of people now will do cupcakes and I think that's super cute. Like they'll have like a small cake to cut but everyone gets like a cupcake of the cake that's cute Mm -hmm. but yeah I think I would just be like everyone here's cheesecake (laughs) um and your that cheesecake is delicious so yeah I think that will be your wedding exactly I think I'm just rolling with the cheesecake maybe like before the dessert I'll be like hey everyone quickly I'm gonna cut this cake but then you're all getting served the same cake you know (laughs) we'll we'll find a new tradition for that one um and then this one goes along the same lines saving the wedding cake. This might be a little bit before your time when people did this. Is that like the freezing it? Yeah, freezing it After? or like guests would take home one as a party favor. And I think the oh. tradition was you were supposed to put it under your pillow. It's wrapped in foil, just FYI. Mm-hmm. You would put it under your pillow and have good dreams about the couple. Um, See, I don't understand this at all, so I would probably just not do it. Yeah. I don't know if I would. I don't do- want to sleep on a piece of cake. <laughs> That's my answer to that question. So um, no, for me. I remember going to a wedding. This was early 2000s. And um, she is like my family. And this was at her wedding. And I remember asking my mom, why are we getting such a tiny piece of cake? <laughs> why is it wrapped in foil? And my mom was the one who said, oh, we're supposed to put it under our pillows tonight. And of course, I did that because I was like... Mm-hmm nine um and I just remember I'm like I had like a little smushed tinfoil of cake the next day and I'm like do I eat it now she's like no Laura please don't eat the cake (laughs) (laughs) so uh, that was like that's like one of the only times I've seen that where like the guests take it home so that's why I'm not sure if it's like an older tradition that's a little bit before our times I think so because I haven't seen that at all yeah but I know like a lot of the the bride and groom will often save a piece of cake and it just lives in their freezer and I guess maybe I'm taking this from the Simpsons every time they open it they like think of the bride and groom or like their wedding (laughs) (laughs) yeah um nah I don't yeah I mean I guess you're not even having a cake so there will be no cake to save no I'll save a little cupcake perfect maybe I'll probably eat it on the way home I know that'd be me I'll be like oh I know we're supposed to freeze this but I'm hungry (laughs) Yeah, it's just like I've eaten – I've tried to eat a fair bit today, but I'm still hungry. Yeah. And uh, one thing you don't see on like really any wedding cake anymore are the bride and groom toppers. Oh, yeah. I feel like those are super, too. They're so out of fashion now, I think. They are. I don't – I haven't seen them at all. No, I, I can maybe recall one or two weddings with one. Yeah. Um, but now people are just more going – if they're going to have a cake, like they just go more for that like – beautiful decorative like flowers or nature like and Mm -hmm. that's kind of what I've seen more these days also I'm just thinking of like my last uh my only kind of visual on the bride and groom toppers is a scene from Shrek (laughs) um where there's like the the cake when he when Lord Farquaad is going to get married to Fiona and I don't remember who it is but you know they have Lord Farquaad like he's you know standing yes um at that he's the same height as Fiona, and I, th- I think it's Shrek, but he starts pushing him down. <laughs> Sit down and make him smaller. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's my only that's my only reference. Yeah. For me, it's Runaway Bride when yeah. um, Maggie is in the, the wedding cake store, and she's picking out, like, the bride and groom. And mm-hmm. um, Ike walks in, Richard Gere, and uh, the baker is just like, oh, man, I think that one looks most like you. And then he takes it and he's looking at it and he's just like, bam, 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 bam to the groom because she's like jilted so many grooms from the altar. And he's like, yep, oh that's God. her. All right. <laughs> that's the only reference I can think of at the moment. <laughs> Great God. movie, people. If you haven't seen it, go watch Runaway Bride with Julia Roberts and Richard Gere. It's one of my favorite I movies growing up. Seen it. 
Yeah, it's so good. So good. I haven't seen it. All right. I'll have to add it to my list. I have a final rapid fire question. Okay. Giving the bride away. Okay. You know what? I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to do it. You're going for it? Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like probably the whole, like, tradition behind it, I will think, I don't know how I feel about that. But, like, I want my dad to walk me down the aisle. I'd probably have my mom come too, though. Yeah. I, like, the most recent one I was at, um, the bride just walked down by herself and I feel like that's becoming really common but it was actually last year at another wedding we were at where the bride's mother and father walked her down the aisle Mm -hmm. and I was just I saw that and I was just like that is so special yeah yeah I love it because like I always wanted my father to walk me down the aisle but like I feel like we would need my mother there to keep us together Mm -hmm. (laughs) Same, <laughs> same. She would be like, okay, we need to go sit down. We need to, you're fine. Like to both of us, you know, like, like it would, I don't think my dad could do it by himself. Like, I think, I think my mom would have to be there. See, I need like both my mom and dad just to hold me up. Yeah. <laughs> because I'll be like, I'm gonna fall down. <laughs> but yeah, the most recent one that I was at too, it was both uh, her mother and father that walked her down. And I was just like, literally they started walking down the aisle and I was just like, Okay, I'm just going to go cry now. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. I love that that's becoming a thing now. I think it's, like, so good because these are the two people who raised you, right? And I think mm-hmm. it then, um, if we think about, like, the tradition behind it, it kind of breaks that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Where it's not like, you know, the the father is like, here's the dowry, here's the girl kind of thing. It's now like, yeah. okay, here's our daughter who we've raised and we love her and we're, like, passing her on to you or like you're joining the family kind of thing I just I like that mm-hmm. and uh grooms grooms this is a note for you get your best man to remind you when you're at the altar you shake their parents hands okay oh. before you take your soon-to-be bride shake their hands all right or hug them whatever you know all right. whatever comfort level you're on but like why do I feel like you've had an experience where this didn't happen? Um, oh, no, no, no bad experience. But I think it's just like, I don't know. It's just a proper thing to do. It's where it's, Yeah, it's respect. And it's just like the groom acknowledging like, you know, thank you. Right? Like, mm-hmm. thank you for raising this beautiful woman. I'm going to take care of her. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so We're going to take care of each other. Exactly. Exactly. Not I'm taking care. Not he's taking care of us. No, no. 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 You, you know what I'm saying. We live in equal society here equal marriage yes. Yes. <laughs> anyway those are all my rapid fire questions even though they didn't end up being that rapid fire because we had to take half an hour to questions explain take them. 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right that's yeah. usually how these rapid fire sections go yeah anyway we hope you guys enjoyed this we just want to do like fun yeah. summer episode because it is wedding season and uh, we want to know what your traditions are or thoughts on traditions um mm-hmm. so definitely email us at tea with laura and rachel at gmail.com and you can also leave us a five-star review on apple podcasts or a five-star rating on spotify we would very much appreciate it if you would do so because it really helps out the show yes it does and with that live like tea live like tea <laughs>